Okay, we're going to go over the concept of intervals, a quick review. I have some questions here for us to look over. And again, these are intervals. We already went through this. But we have some additional examples here. Uh, okay, this is really an application of proportions, the homework we already assigned. So let's read through this in... It's important to understand the definition of some kind of things. Like, in a recent year, there are 320 births. So it's very helpful to know that there's 365 days in a year. So for the first question, they tell us that there are 325 births in a year. So that rate is 320 births per 365 days. Now that's a year. So the first statement is going to give us a rate. Now the question becomes, what is the mean number of births in now 30 days? Because they're saying in a month interval. So what's the mean number of births now in a month? So we're going to have to find that mean. That mean here is our mu. So remember, we create a proportion here. This is equal to the mu births over the number of days in a month. So that's 30 days. So these rates are consistent in the fact that you have births per days, births per days. That's vitally important. If you don't set it up correctly, when you try to solve for mu, you're not going to get the appropriate answer. So the rates here are given you create what's called a proportion, equal ratios, A over B equals C over D. This is a proportion. And what you need to do now is solve for mu, solve for the mean. So we can cross multiply, or we can simply say, this is 320 out of 365. We can use our solving skills to multiply both sides by 30. So we get cancellation. And now mu is going to be 30 times 320 over 365. So this is going to give us the mean number of births in now a month interval or 30 days. So this is how we handle the first question. So this is question one. And so now we could use our calculator. All right, so we can bring in the TI and say, let's find the TI here. Um, TI, all right, let's say, here we go. Let's put that to the TI. And there we are. Okay. Now let's get that TI out. Here it is. I'm gonna move these things out of the way. All right. Put in parentheses 30 times 320 divided by 365. And so our instructions here are gonna to be to approximate to the nearest hundredth, so that's two decimal places. So this is 26.30. So 26.30 approximated to the nearest hundredths. This is going to be the setting here. Looks like it's the number of births. So that's the number of births in a year. So 
So there we go. Now that's how you handle the first kind of interval. So this is very similar to what we went over. We just have to look at some various examples. Um, how about in a week? They're going to change the interval on you now to a week. And a week here, you have to know the meaning of a week. A week is actually seven days. So what you change now here, the only thing you change is this number is now seven because we're going to set our rates equal to each other. We're going to create a proportion. So when we do that, this is question number two. What we have here is 320 out of 365 will be mu over 7. Now remember you're consistent. Births to days. Births to days. Equal ratios. You can now multiply both sides by 7 using some algebra again. And so mu will be 7 times 320 over 365. So this is going to give me the mean amount of births now in a week. So when we go to the TI calculator here, we can say, remove things. All right. Seven times 320. Divided by 365. And when we approximate to the nearest hundredths, this will be 6.14. So there's going to be 6.14 births in a week. And this is how you handle question number two. Now, question three, they're going to say, we erase everything. What about in a day? Now, when they say day, that means one day. Like a month is 30 days. A week is seven days. Question three now says in a day. So in a day, we change this rate now to one. And so... The ratio now becomes mu over 1. And anything divided by 1 now is itself. So mu will become 320 over 365. So now all I have to do is divide. So when I go to the TI, we know... 320 divided by 365 gives you the average or the mean number of births in a day. And going out to the nearest hundredths, that's 0.88. And this is going to be the mean number of births per day. 0.88. So this is working with the interval idea, giving you guys some extra examples. We already gave you some examples in class. So we got some extra examples here on how to find mu. And this is going to be what's going to be important in our future. So we're going to go to the next kind of setting here, which is going to be murders. And this is the information they give us. They're saying now, again, in a recent year, you got to know how many days are in a year. There's 365 days in a year, and this is ignoring leap years. So in a year, you got 365 days. So what they're saying now is you have 200 murders in a particular city. 
So that murder rate, creating a ratio again, there's 200 murders per 365 days. So here's my first rate that we're going to use. Now, they're asking for the mean number of murders in a month interval. And again, they're defining a month to be 30 days. So we can say mu because we don't know what that mean is. This is that mu. And that's now going to be out of 30 days. So verify, ladies and gentlemen, that your rates are the same in terms of units. Murders, this is really murders per day, per day. So we are set up correctly for number four here. You have to have the units in the exact same spots. So this again is the mean number of murders per day. 200 out of 365 is mu over 30. So to solve for mu, you multiply both sides by 30 to get cancellation. So now your mu will be 30 times 200 over 365. So when we go to the TI now, we're going to enter 30 times 200, close that, divided by 365. And so we're going to approximate this again to the nearest hundredth. So 16 point looks like it's going to be 4, 4. The 3 is in the hundredths position. The digit to the right is an 8. So when we approximate, it'll be 16.44. Now that's 16.444 murders per month, 30 days. And that's how you handle number four. This is working with intervals and rates. Question five, all they change in question five now is they're saying now in a 10-day interval. So you say, well, how does that change everything? Instead of 30 days over here, this will now be in a 10-day interval. So what's new now is over here, 10-day interval. If we erase this. This is the new portion. So wherever there was a 30 now, we're going to erase. We're going to erase all this. Our proportion now becomes 200 over 365 equal to mu times 10, or over 10. Because when we solve for mu using algebra, we multiply both sides by 10. And so now mu becomes... 10 times 200 over 365. So going to the TI again, here's what we get. 10 times 200, close that, divided by 365. So mu is going to be 5.4. And that's murders per 10 days. So I'm going to write that information down. So it's murders per 10 days. So this is how we handle question five. They just change the interval on you. Question six, you might say, how does six change? We should change the color. They want to know now, find the mean number of murders in a week. A week is seven days. So we change this to seven. So 
So we put seven here. This is still 365. And we're going to use our algebra. Multiply both sides by seven. You get cancellation. And mu will be 7 times 200 out of 365. So, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. Let's try this out. 7 times 200 divided by 365. So when we approximate this to the nearest hundredths again, we get 3.84. And that's murders per week. So ladies and gentlemen, remember this. This is something that people may sometimes say. They'll say, Mr. Judge, is, is that five days? Is that, is, is that a, a, a work week? And I'll say to you, no, when they say week, a week is seven days. They didn't say work week. So this is going to be seven days. If they said five days, then you go with five. But this is how you handle question five or six. I apologize. We changed that. This was in a week, seven days. So you might say, what happens now if they change this to day? They say in the next day now. Well, how many days are in a day? They mean one day. If they say day, that's one. So what changes now is that denominator, and you should know that anything divided by 1 is itself. So you can say, is that mu over 1? It is. So mu will be 200 over 365. And what's mu approximately? We'll see. 200 divided by 365, yeah. This is gonna be approximately now to the nearest um, hundredths, the four is in the hundredths position, the digit to the right is a seven, so this is 0.55. And I guess this is murders per day. So, 0.55 murders in a day interval. So I'm going to move this. And this is how you work with rates. This is how you work with proportions. This was on your homework probability review. And that's why that was so important to work on. So you can handle these kind of questions. For Poisson. Now, let's go here. To deal with the next kind of questions. What they're saying now here in number eight, we have radioactive decay. And instead of them telling us in a year interval, they already told us from the beginning, in 365 day interval, they communicated that, there was 100,000 radioactive atoms that decayed from a particular element, XYZ. Okay, so let me go with this. Let's write this down. There are 
a hundred thousand radioactive elements that decayed in a 365 day time interval. See, they're asking us now here for what is the mean number of radioactive elements that, that will decay. So that mu, this is for the radioactive, this is for the decay, the number of elements. So this is decay. This unit is the decay out of the time interval. In question eight, they give us a month again, which is 30 days. So we're going to have to make sure we are consistent with our units. If this is the number of, alum, of atoms that decay, this has to be the same thing. The numerators have to be the same. If the denominators are in days, well, that has to be on the bottom. So our rates are set up correctly. And this is kind of a, an area where students will make a mistake. They, they read it and they don't really read it. In other words, comprehension is part of what you need to do here. If this is the number who are decaying per day, this also has to be the number who are decaying per day as well. So your rate now is 100,000 out of 365 will become mu out of 30. So when we multiply both sides by that 30, your 30s cancel. So mu will become 30 times 100,000 out of 365. So this is question number eight. In the TI, we put 30 times 100,000 divided by 365, and we'll close this. You get 8,219.8. Now, this is in a week's time interval. This is the number of atoms that decay in a week. So this is the uh, number of atoms that decay per, sorry, that's a month period. That's 30 days. So they told us 30 days for question eight. That's in a month. So at the rate of 100,000 per year, that's really 8,219.18 in a 30-day interval in a month. So this is question eight. Question nine, what you'll have changed here is a week, seven days. So when they change that interval now to seven days, we get a new proportion. And it's still decay per days. That's the number of atoms that have decayed in that interval. So your proportion here, first ratio, 100,000 over 365, is mu over 7. We can multiply both sides by 7 now, and you have cancellation. Now, mu will equal 7 times 100,000 over 365 for number 9. So, in the TI now, we'll put 7 times 100,000 divided by 365, you close that. And in a week's period now, what you'll see is 1,917.81. 
those are atoms that decay per week now because it's a seven day time interval. This is a decay per week. Number of atoms that have decayed. So number 10 comes along and they change the interval and they, what they tell you in number 10, they give you a 12 day interval. So for number 10, the interval now is 12. So this is a 12 day interval. So what you end up with is 100,000 out of 365 will equal mu over 12. So you now multiply both sides by 12. You're going to use algebra. Mu equals 12 times 100,000 out of 365. So now, 12 times 100,000 divided by 365, close that, here's your new mu. 3,287.67. And this is the number of atoms that decay this is the decay in a 12-day interval. That was the question. So this is how we work with the ratios, and we get proportions. Number 11, they changed this question to a day interval. So you have to know what they mean when they say a day. They mean one day. So how this changes for us now will be 100,000 out of 365 is mu over 1. Now, mu over 1 will be simply mu. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So when I go to the TI to do my division, you have 100,000. divided by 365 days. So what that gives me is approximately 273.97. That's the molecules that are the atoms that decay every day. Two hundred seventy-three point nine seven molecules or atoms, sorry, that decay per day, and this is how we work with the intervals, ladies and gentlemen. So you create a ratio equal equal ratios called a proportion, and you solve for the mean. Okay, let's do. The next situation, which will be, in a recent survey, there were 4,000 car fatalities per 60,000 miles traveled. Now, let's read this because, again, a part of what you need to do here 
with every one of your questions is actually read and it's based on comprehension now you may look at this and you say things like well this is math mr judge and i just don't like math and i'll tell you this is just reading comprehension there's nothing unique here about what you're reading here that's related to math even though they have numbers there's there's words here and what they're saying is that in a recent survey there's 4,000 car fatalities per 60,000 miles traveled. In the next, 100,000 miles traveled. They want to know what is the mean number of fatalities. So pay attention to what they're saying here. For number 12 here, let's go back. What they're asking for is what is the mean, that's mu, number of fatalities. So if you said they're asking me for mu, which is the mean, and that represents number of fatalities. And this is over the 100,000 miles traveled. And that's the miles unit. So this is fatalities per mile. Now you might say, how did I figure that out? Because when I read left to right, even though I started with 100,000 miles traveled, they have comma, what is the mean? That's mu. That's the unit that goes on top. Number of fatalities. What goes on the bottom is the 100,000 miles that are traveled. So this is my question. And I'm reading it a little different than the others. So that when you go back now and you look at the rate here, the rate that they give you, they give you 4,000 car fatalities per 60,000 miles traveled. Remember what I said. You have to have this equal to number of fatalities. That unit goes on top. The miles traveled goes on the bottom. So what this means is there's 4,000 fatalities, that's on top, over the 60,000 miles that you travel. Because this unit and this unit, they have to match. It has to be fatalities per mile. Fatalities per mile. So... Now you have mu out of 100,000 becomes 4,000 out of 60,000. So you're going to multiply both sides by 100,000 here. And you cancel and you get mu equals 4,000 times 100,000 out of the 60,000. So this is important to read your rates correctly. And if you have to read it two or three times to get it right, then so be it. Because this isn't based on statistics. This is based on reading comprehension. This isn't really math in some ways, even though you see the numbers. And it's covered in a math course. This is about comprehension. So you're going to enter in your calculator now the 4,000 times 100,000 divided by the 60,000. And when we approximate this to the nearest hundredths, what we get is that there's 6,666.67 fatalities in a 100,000-mile interval. Because now the interval that they give you is 100,000 miles. There was 4,000 per 60,000 miles, and that becomes 6,666.67. This, again, is fatalities. Per 
100,000 miles traveled. That's your new um, interval. So here's question 12. Notice what they do in the next question. In the next question, they change your interval to 250,000 miles traveled. They still want the mean number of fatalities. So they went from 60,000 miles traveled, and they're now changing that to an interval of 250,000 miles traveled. So you have mu over 100,000 becomes 4,000 over 250,000. So now when you use algebra, and this is question number 13, multiply both sides by 100,000, which you guys should see by now is that 100,000 here will be on top times 4,000 over 250,000. So multiply both sides by that 100,000. In your TI, here's what you got. 100,000 times 4,000. Close that, divided by 250. Thousand. Let's make sure we get that correct, hopefully. Okay. So it looks like what this means is there's going to be exactly 16,000 fatalities. Now you say fatalities in what time interval or in what particular interval are they talking about? It's not time. It's actually 250,000 miles traveled. So that's in a 250,000 mile travel interval. Question number 13. So question 14 comes along. And you say, what about question 14? Notice what they ask you. This is now in a million mile traveled interval. So instead of 250,000 miles traveled, this is now 1 million. This is how our interval changes. So question 14 You now have a million miles traveled. So change your second ratio here now to a million. And so notice how this changes. When you solve here using algebra, you multiply both sides now by a million. So here's your million. So a million here times 4,000. Now, if you are kind of a little bit awake with your arithmetic, you can cancel here, and this is 4. So this is going to be 4 times 4,000, which is actually going to equal 16,000. So I didn't need to use my calculator for that. Because I know how to do some arithmetic. That's 4 times 4,000, which is 16,000. Now that's 16,000 fatalities per million miles.
And if you want to use words, you can. Because very often we communicate with words. But that's the rate. That's your ratio now. 16,000 fatalities per million miles. And that's number 14. Number 15, they're talking about checks written. And you might say, well, what do you mean by checks written? When we go and we read this, they say in a recent decade... So you have to know the meaning of a decade. A decade, ladies and gentlemen, is a 10-year interval. So in a recent decade, an individual wrote 250,000 checks. So we say, okay. In a 10-year period, 250,000 checks were written. Let's see what they're asking. What's the mean... Number of checks. So, this is mu. Written in the next century. So, you say century here, you have to know the meaning of a century. And a meaning of a century is a hundred years. So, when we look at the question here for mu now, they're saying... They want mu, number of checks, over a hundred years. That's what they're asking. So we go and we use the information they gave us here. You say, what did they give us? 250,000 checks. That goes on top. Per decade. A decade is 10 years. So that's per 10 years. So in this example here, mu over 100 is 250,000 divided by 10. Now remember, you need... This to be the number of checks, and it is over the time interval of years. So they both have that consistency there. So our ratios are correct here. We created a proportion. So when you solve now by multiplying both sides by 100, mu becomes 100 times 250,000 divided by 10. Now, I can do, again, some simple arithmetic and know that 100 divided by 10 is 10. So, they get 10 times 250,000. I also know how to multiply by powers of 10. 250,000 times 10 comes out to be 2,500,000. And that'll be checks per century. Because that first question was century, a hundred years. So you may say, I'm not so sure if you take now 10 times 250,000, you're going to get 2,500,000 if you're not so sure about the computation. You have your TI. This is how we do question 15. They asked in the next century. Question 15. You might say, what are they asking in the next question? Well, they're saying now, not in a century, not in 
100 years for question 15. We're going to erase that. That's now in the next one year. In the next year. Mu over 1, anything over 1 is mu. Now, I know how to divide by 10. That cuts down one of the zeros. 250,000 now becomes 25,000. So there's 25,000 checks written per year. And then that's one year. And again, if you say, I really don't believe you, you take 250,000. If we go back to the iPad here, right? Here's what I'm saying. Here's that one year. One year. Mu over one is mu. 250,000 divided by 10 in the TI. Go to the TI. is 25,000, sure enough. So that's what we changed. And this is number 16. They went from a century, 100 years, to one year. And then you say, how do they change this to a week and a day? Well, we're not going to do 17 and 18. Because we have a typo here. We only do 15 and 16. So that's a typo. And I'll correct that in the worksheet. So 15 and 16 we do not do. That now makes this to be the new, let's see, 15, 16, 17. This will be the new 17. And 18. Typo. We'll fix that. So let's go to earthquakes. And we'll change the color. So let's read this first statement here. There are 375 earthquakes above 5.0 in a decade. A decade is 10 years. Okay. What are they asking in 17? They're saying, what is the mean, and that is mu, number of earthquakes? So mu, which is the number of earthquakes, in... Here's the units in the next year. So they're saying in a one-year interval. And that's equal to, if we move this out of the way, and by now we should know that that's number of earthquakes, what's the rate that they gave us? They said there's 375 earthquakes in a decade, which is 10 years. Equal ratios. Mu over 1 is 375 divided by 10. So mu over 1 is mu. 375 divided by 10, you'll find, is 37.5. Now, this is earthquakes per decade. So, if I go to the TI now, we can say 37.5 divided by 
oops, sorry, 375 divided by 10. Those people who don't believe my arithmetic, 375 divided by 10 is 37.5. That's number 17. Now, number 18, if you say, how does that change? Number 18, the interval now is the next century. So you have to know how many years are in a century. That's in the next 100 years. So for question 18 now, we change this to 100 years. So we have here 100 now. So when we solve for mu now by multiplying both sides by 100, we get 100 times 375 over 10. And again, if you notice that 100 divided by 10 is 10, you can actually do your division. We don't have to put everything we see in the calculator. So this is 10 times 375. Now, 10 times 375, again, if you know how to multiply by powers of 100 or powers of 10, 10 times 375 is actually 3,750. And that's earthquakes per century. Because they change the units to 100 years down here in question 18. And that's a century. 100 year interval. So ladies and gentlemen, this is how we go about answering these kinds of questions here with the intervals. And I hope this is very helpful for you in that when you work on the Poisson questions for homework, um, everything will turn out very well. But we did talk about some of these. Um, changing the interval on you. We did it in terms of minutes and we did it in terms of earthquakes. So here's an, an additional sort of uh, set of examples that are designed to help you for your homework. So anyway, have a good week. Take care, a good weekend, and I'll upload this for you guys and hopefully you'll find that of some benefit.